So James Harden wants to actually actually catch a disease to force a trade. Sports presents on the daily. Wow, well, you're doing VIP wherever you are. Welcome back to the channel. Cole Johnson is live and in living color on the daily on tap, presented by Cole Sports. And subscribe if you want to be one of many people who get this show on this channel every Monday through Friday. Be the smart man or woman in your family, your church, your workplace, or wherever you congregate with others. That's Cold Sports on a daily Monday through Friday. Subscribe. Now, This is Tuesday, and I'm so glad that I get a chance to talk to you because this has been bothering me for a minute. My team, the Houston Rockets, is that's my favorite NBA team, and I make no bones about it. However, I can't really say the same about the number one player on it, James Harden. And he's doing another boneheaded thing in my estimation. And He's actually going so far as to risking his own health to force his way off of the team he plays currently. And because of this boneheaded decision in trying to hold out, and yes, I know he's back on the team now, but to force the trade that he's been saying ever since he got eliminated this past October, you, Mr. Harton, earn this week's distinction of... This is cut and dried, plain and simple. You have a player in James Harden. You have a team in the Rockets. You have the upheaval that has happened over the course of this offseason. And the player, who now is 32, is feeling the itch of wanting to get a ring and he's now wanting to ring chase because he sees the window closed in Houston. And really, Mr. Harden, the window being closed, it's your fault that it's closed. You for real. I said, it is your fault. The window is closed. You for real. Yes, I am for real. And this is why. Since you've been on the team in 2013, you have had these cascading demands. And you it has started with when you got on the team, you wanted to be the number one player. The current, well, I should say current, the the coach at the time, Kevin McHale, actually acquiesced to that wish, and you became the number one player on the team overnight. Then, in coalescing and meshing with the other star player in Dwight Howard, you ran into issues and problems. You sneak dissed, and you got him up out the paint. Out went Howard. And then, during an offseason, you begged, you pleaded, you were James Browning. And I mean James Browning. Please, please, please. Chris Paul, you were saying, dude, man, we get down like this in, in, in pickup games in the summer. Man, why don't you come and join the Rockets? We can we can do this, man. And plus, both of us are motivated. You want a chip? I want a chip. Two backcourt guys, and we're about to get chips. That's what it's about. And we are hungry, so we're going to get it. And Paul said, sure, why not join the team? But... Did Paul end up becoming the primary ball handler for the Rockets? No! Did he even become the primary point guard for the Rockets? No! Did he even have any say whatsoever in terms of if Harden was getting two, 
too big in his britches. No! No, he had to be he had to be happy with being a pawn just like every other player on the squad. So Paul comes in, he does this thing. Oh, <laughs> let me backtrack. So the coach who was did a pretty good job led them to the 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 Western Conference Finals in 2015. They get off to a slow start, 7-11, and then there's back chirping you know from home, saying that this guy is out of touch. He doesn't have the grasp of the team. And Kevin McHale goes out the window. In comes D'Antoni, Mike D'Antoni. And he lets that season play out. And then the very next season, Harden becomes the number one player and ball handler for the Rockets. Basically saying something to the effect of... uh, Quote, I'm going to make James Harden the Rockets version of Steve Nash. Close quote. Come on. D'Antoni, you should have learned. This guy thinks scoring first. He is a shooting guard, and you have a masquerade as a point guard. Well, I can't say you have a masquerade. You're now the former Rockets head coach. You had a masquerade as a point guard. There isn't point guard tendencies in him. Yeah, you can say, well, wait a minute, Cole. He did have more than 10 assists a few years. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, but you don't necessarily have to be a point guard to have and amass that many assists. I mean, LeBron, I mean, there's a guy, hmm, and I, and I cursed in actually saying his name. There's a guy that I try not to mention unless it's Wednesday. He isn't really a point guard, yet he averaged over 10 assists a game this past year. So you don't have to be a point guard to average that many assists in a game for a year. It's all about what the primary goal of the ball handler is. If it's to involve others, then that means the primary guy is going to be a distributor. But if the primary ball handler's first job is to score, then that means it's all about having him get off first. And so since you have that mentality, mm, and I was hoping that Paul was, would help the Rockets and D'Antoni in general, and in particular, get to the understanding of, okay, you have a guy who can help Harden play off the ball, and he can actually do what he does best, and that score in the open field. No, Harden wanted to control the ball. Two point guards one ball, and you already know what that means because for the first of two times, it amassed zero rings. So we get to the 2018 season and things look good on paper and things look good on the court because the Rockets go out to 65 wins in that season. They garner the number one overall seed in the NBA playoffs. They get to the Western Conference Finals where they play an opponent that just simply has their number in the Golden State Warriors because they bounced them in five in 2015's Western Conference Finals. Then they swept them in the 2016 first round. They didn't even get them. They didn't even get the Warriors to 17. That was the Spurs that got them out the paint in a Western Conference semifinals matchup that went six games. But here we are, 2018, and we have the opportunity for the Rockets to dethrone the then two time, well, I should say the, which is, yeah, well, the two time in the last three years champion and the defending champion. Well, they go out to a 3 2 lead in that series. Paul tweaks his hamstring. He's out for the series. And there's two games for the Rockets to get one victory. And Harden does a disappearing act in the second half of both games. 
So the Rockets get bounced by the Warriors in 2018, get bounced by the Warriors in the next year's Western Conference semifinals in six. So after the 2019 Western Conference semifinals matchup between the Warriors and the Rockets, Harden got on a mic much like this, and he opined, quote, I ain't the problem. You already know who the problem is. Close quote. And that was alluding to Chris Paul. And what happened? We didn't even get two months past that offseason. He was traded to the Thunder in exchange for Russell Westbrook. This marriage only happened one year. Two point guards, one ball, zero rings for the second time between two point guards. And this time Westbrook was like, no, nah, I need to get out of here, man. I need to get out of here. And so he forced a trade. He goes to D.C. And from the Wizards, well, it's, comes John Wall, a guy that Harden has wanted to play with. <laughs> uh, let's go to the record, shall we? Harden wanted to play with Paul. Harden wanted to play with Westbrook. And now Harden wanted to play with Wall. You see the pattern, don't you? Come on! And what makes this so bad is that Harden, dissatisfied with where he has gone on the team, now wants to be traded. And he held out. And then on top of holding out, he decided to attend a little baby birthday celebration earlier in the month without a mask. I mean, it's just ridiculous. No social distancing, no mass prevention from getting COVID. And this is right around the time COVID-19 decided to have a spike everywhere in the United States for a second time. But Harden didn't give a crap. He just wanted to be traded. And he was going to do everything possible, including catch a disease in order to do the trade. Well, I'm so glad that somebody in the media besides me is actually expressing what I feel because one half of all the smoke podcasts, uh, <laughs> Stephen Jackson stack said it beautifully. He said it like so quote. It's just simple. Harden doesn't want to be accountable. Mike D'Antoni is the worst defensive coach in NBA history. Ain't going to win nothing, ain't won nothing as the head coach. And he's easy to run over. So James trying to continue to be close to D'Antoni so he can't be held accountable. <sighs> Close quote. Now he's with the Rockets. He had to do an extensive COVID-19 protocol test where he had to have a string of seven consecutive days of negative COVID-19 readings before he could even join the team. Just seeing how he's moving, basically. This whole thing stinks to high heaven. And that's why, Mr. Harton, you, my friend, are tone dead. Now, if you want this shirt that you see, the established 2016 brand of the brand, you can get that shirt. The description box below has all the details to getting it. And if you think that I'm being a little too harsh on Mr. Harden, or if you're saying, you know what, you need to go in even further. <laughs> in either case, like this video and share it throughout your social media. Comment below because I love what you have to say, VIP. Your comments mean everything to me. And don't forget, hit that notification bell and subscribe to this channel for any and all content that emanates from here. That's all the time I have. Thank you so much. I love you, VIP. 
And for all of us here at Cold Sports, I'm Cole Johnson, and this has been yet another installment of Cold Sports on the visual and on the day.